This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Nugent versus Rodriguez. Ms. Nugent, it's my understanding from the documents that you submitted to this court that you are suing Mr. Rodriguez for an eye injury that you received at his park involving his mascot. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You're asking this court to award you $36,000 in past medical bills, $14,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $50,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Rodriguez, you believe this is not your fault. This is a freak accident, and you shouldn't be held responsible for this. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. Let's get into the legal sauce. Now, you all went to the baseball game. Are y'all a baseball family? Yes, yeah. we are. Tell me about that. Well, Your Honor, we've been going to baseball games for as long as I can remember. Every year we go as a family, I'd go with my dad. We always sit in the same seats every time we go to the game behind home plate. So really a family ritual kind yes, of thing. Yes, every year. And Mr. Rodriguez, that's the kind of thing you want at your park, is people making it just part of their family, right? In fact, I relate with them. You know, me personally, I grew up in the baseball family. My grandfather owned this team 50 years ago. He's the one that started this franchise. My and this father, is the Bantam Roosters. The Bantam Roosters, yes, sir. <laughs> one of the things that I personally enjoy is the fact that families like the Nugents can come and enjoy, you know, a safe environment where <laughs> good entertainment is gonna happen especially with our mascot. And, and your mascot's name is what? Home Run Roo. Home Run Roo. That's the Bantam Roosters <laughs> the mascot. Bantam Roosters mascot, yes, sir. So y'all sit in the same spot. Sit every, by home every play. time. Okay, real baseball lovers. That's really what you want, right. Mr. Rodriguez. It sure is, you know. And the, the best part about the fact that they uh, attend our, our games in the seats that they do is actually we call Home Run Roo's Roosters Nest. Okay. Uh, that's where he's stationed, and he passes out peanuts uh, in, in that area. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, Ms. Nugent, you and your dad are sitting at the park. Mm -hmm. So on this day, tell me how this happened. Music is playing. We're excited. My favorite player is, is at home plate. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> out of... Nowhere. Definitely, definitely not all of a sudden. Yes, Your Honor, it was all of a sudden. Out of, okay. Out of nowhere, it feels like a bag of rocks hit my eye. Oh, like, it was, it was so painful. I had never experienced pain like that to where I thought at first it was a, a baseball until I realized that it was peanuts. You're certainly not expecting to get hit with anything when you're behind exactly. home plate. Exactly. There's right. a net in everything. Mr. Rodriguez. What's up with folks getting hit behind the backstop? Their seats are located around 10 rows up. Okay. We have signs all around the stadium and on our tickets. The ticket holder assumes all risks at our games of flying objects. I actually have the ticket here, if you would like to see it, where it actually states all of the information that we try to provide for our All clients. right. Sheriff Matt, if you'll get the ticket. Let me take a peek at it. All right. This is the Bantam Roosters ticket. It says the carrier of this ticket assumes all risks and dangers accompanying this baseball game, including danger of being injured by thrown or batted baseballs. That's what all your tickets baseballs, say. Baseballs, not peanuts. Now, Mr. Rodriguez, I mean, it does say baseballs, batted balls. Doesn't say anything about peanuts now. Well, that's exactly why we uh, indicated assumes all risks and dangers accompanying this baseball game. Well, from a legal perspective, all risks are all risks that are reasonably anticipated. When you go to a baseball game, you exactly. anticipate getting hit by a baseball, maybe. Peanuts, not so much. So I'm not sure that all risks includes peanuts legally. We offer free peanuts. And in our stadium, especially in the area in which they were sitting, uh, Home Run Rue actually gives peanuts to all the people in that area that request, you know, peanuts. Did you all get the peanuts for free? I didn't request Not peanuts. on this day, but before, sure, when absolutely. you went to see the Bantam Roosters, you ate the peanuts, sure, right? Of yeah, sure, of course. So, you know, so Home Run Roo throws the peanuts sure. out. Those peanuts are free. Now, the peanuts yeah. are free. Now, I'll let you know that uh, when I spoke well, it's to been a Mr. Tradition. Harper... It's been a tradition, so... It's been a tradition for 50 years that we throw peanuts for free for our, our fans. So, so, free peanuts. Yes, so, sir. Th that day, the father, Mr. Nugent, was actually requesting peanuts. They were taunting, and they were, she, they we were, were yelling at, at uh, Home Run Roo. Now, taunting how? 
We expect taunting at our games. We know that it's going to happen, but it's usually happening to the opposing team, not the mascot. So how do you taunt a mascot? All right, well, Mr. Harper, who I actually brought with me today, he states that the plaintiffs were yelling at him, saying that he couldn't throw that far, that he wasn't going to make the peanuts to them. And after he engaged with them visually, he decided, you know what, I'm going to give these peanuts to this family right here. And it just so happened, uh, the father could not catch the peanuts. Mr. Nugent, everybody's having fun. Uh, yes. were, you, were you interacting with Home Run Rue and saying, look, we need some peanuts, throw them to me? Uh, what, what, you know? Well, what were you saying? Treat me like I'm Home Run yeah, Rue. Hey, you don't like a spring chicken to me. Come on, throw it out of here. Throw it over here. OK, and uh, <laughs> you're going back and forth with him, and then he eventually <laughs> throws the peanuts to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't request peanuts, Your Honor. It, they came out of nowhere and hit me in the face. Ms. Nugent, did you know that your dad was going back and forth with Home Run Rue? I heard him going back and forth, so I saw oh. Home Run Rue. However, Your Honor, I'm at a baseball game. But that I'm has not nothing there to do for with peanuts. That. I'm there to watch the games. Was he taunting him? Because if he uh, if he's taunting a mascot, I can't imagine your boyfriend going to the game with y'all. No, no, he... <laughs> no he, Your Honor, he was not taunting. <laughs> We're at a baseball game, it's loud. You have to say Man, over little, here, maybe but maybe not taunting. Take a break with Red. Yeah, but I can't imagine y'all were out there saying, uh, home run room, may I request a bag of peanuts, oh, please? No. Well, not so right? formal, but no. you can ask without yeah. taunting. My father right. wasn't taunting him. Well, it seems to me if, if I'm home run room, and you say, look, you throw like a little kid. You can't throw them over here. Give me those nuts. Give me those nuts. We I'm going to throw them hard. We no. weren't saying things like that. Well, let me hear from Home Run Rue himself. That's James Harper. Yes, sir. Mr. Harper, would you stand up, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> How long have you been Home Run Rue? I've been Home Run Rue for the last five years. I've actually played for this baseball organization. And when I retired, I became the mascot. Well, you know what, so, Your Honor? He may be a rooster, but he is no spring chicken. And apparently, like, you see that mask right yes, there? Yes, ma'am. He probably couldn't even see out of it, which made his that would, aim that off. That would make two of them. Well, let me find that out. Let me find well, that out. Well, it was a very Mr. bad Harper. day that day. It was sweaty. Yeah, I think right, he, he could have I that sweat in his face. Let ball. me hear from Home Run Rue. Mr. Harper. Yes, sir. When you have this uh, headpiece on and the body piece, you become home run rule, right? Absolutely. Now, as home run rule, you got to look out of this thing and see people, right? Yes, sir. Do you remember this incident, seeing these folks in the stand when you had that uh, headpiece on? Uh, I do. And tell me what happened. Well, you know, it was a normal day, baseball game. I was passing out peanuts to fans. Passing them out? Tossing them, slightly tossing them. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Mr. Nugent and Mrs. Nugent were heckling me. Once they started taunting me, the crowd started getting involved, and started cheering them on, telling That's me, yo, you can't true. make it, you That's throw like a girl, you can't reach it all the way up here. So then Mr. Nugent over here puts his hands in the air like he's ready to receive the peanuts. I toss them underhand to him, hit him directly in the hands. The bag of peanuts slipped through his hands and then end up hitting his daughter in the eye. Your Honor, his aim Mr. Has Nugent, did you try to catch the peanuts? I was trying to protect my daughter, and I didn't want to hit her in the eye. Just play, playing catch. But he threw them so hard, and but his aim was off. Your Honor, uh, did he did, throw them hard, Mr. He, Nugent? He threw them hard. Did you throw those Your peanuts Honor, hard? I, Your Honor, it was an underhand toss that hit him directly in his hands. But Butterfingers over here let him slip through his hands, and then they ended up hitting oh, his daughter in the face. Really well, how big of a bag of peanuts are we talking about? Well, you know, Your Honor, I actually brought a bag of peanuts and a radar gun, so we could actually show you if you if you like a demonstration. I would like to see that. Okay, perfect. Right. Put the gloves on, and I want you to put the headpiece on, too. And because I don't want you to injure Sheriff Matt, I'd like you to throw them to your boss. Watch out, Dad. Uh, step no, back. step aside. Give me your best, because they're oh. 10 rows up. Exactly. I need my peanuts. 27, Judge. That's moving, guys. No, that's mine. Right. That, that's not a toss. That's a fastball. Exactly. All right, you may take the headpiece off and the uh, gloves, and you may return back to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Rodriguez, I mean, this is not a small item. These peanuts are hard. Exactly. And they're traveling 10, 15 feet at 20 something miles an hour. Right. Thank you. So, Ms. Nugent. 
You have a detached retina yes, and a damaged eye. Yes. What are you going through? My vision is not the same as it used to be. I can't even do simple things like drive myself around anymore. I have to get somebody else to drive me around. I was a flight attendant and I can't go to work pushing a cart down an aisle looking like a pirate. Like, I can't go to work are, like are that. Are you serious? Really? That is so disrespectful. Did you Very just laugh about this? Very disrespectful. Mr. Harper, you're the one that threw the peanuts. You damaged a woman's eye and you have the nerve to come in my courtroom and laugh about it? <laughs> Sir, please sit down. Miss Nugent, I'm looking at your medical bills here. You have a lot of them. It's $36,000. Yes. You've asked this court to award you $14,000 for pain and suffering. What, what's your biggest worry about this eye? I will never, ever be able to have my full vision again and that I could possibly go completely blind in my eye. And so my dad has been great and is helping as much as he can, but he can only do so much. If your father can catch bag of peanuts, I wouldn't be here losing my job. Mr. Harper, get out of my courtroom! You, yeah, yeah, get you him out of are here! Are you serious? Let's go. Are you calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. To understand your eye injury, we must hear from an ophthalmologist, and this court has consulted Dr. Lauren Yancey. Sheriff Matt, will you bring Dr. Yancey into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, doctor. Dr. Yancey, what is a detached retina? Well, the retina is a thin layer of tissue that lines the back of the eye, and it really acts like the film in the camera. It's what actually captures the picture and allows that picture to be transmitted to your brain. When the retina is torn, it can start as a small tear that can gradually progress and cause complete peeling of the retina off the back of the wall of the eye, much like wallpaper can come down if just the corner's torn up. As the retina begins to detach, it might seem like just some flashing lights and some floaters in the beginning. Now, if the retina becomes completely detached, then there's a complete loss of vision. Well, what's the recovery time for this kind of thing? It can vary depending on the extent of how much retina has actually torn away from the back of the eye. If it's a small tear, it can be something that only requires several weeks of recovery after surgery. However, if the entire retina detaches, that's a pretty extensive repair and can take months, sometimes years, to reach full visual potential, and that may never be the same. Is it possible that throwing, slowly throwing a bag of peanuts like this could hit someone and detach their retina? Enough blunt trauma to an eye can cause a detachment. I've had even a patient where their spouse rolled over in bed and just their hand flapping over at night caused a retinal detachment. However, I think the right hit from any blunt trauma can cause a detachment. All right, thank you, doctor. You are released. Mr. Nugent, you've been quiet most of this day. Yes, sir. Looking back on this, do you feel a little bit responsible for your daughter's injuries? I do, sir. I feel bad but not catching the peanuts. To see her in such pain is heartbreaking. Do you assume responsibility? I shall not resume responsibility because this is your fault. Oh. This guy is working for you. He blew it. He blew it, sir. The toss or the catch? What was Both. blown? Don't do that. Don't do that. Miss Nugent, Mr. Nugent. Mr. Rodriguez, I've heard everything I need to hear and I'm ready to make my decision. <laughs> Folks, the plaintiff has to prove basically three things. The plaintiff, you, Ms. Nugent, have to prove that Mr. Rodriguez was wrong and that his wrong caused your terrible eye injury. Here today, you've put up evidence that it was home run Rue that threw the peanuts to your dad, they went through his hands and hit you in the eye and changed your life forever. So this is not your fault. Here, Mr. Rodriguez, there are plenty of folks that catch peanuts, plenty of folks that interact with home run Rue. This should have been just a great another family day. This is what happens at baseball parks. Things fly. You believe Home run rule, throwing the peanuts is just what folks do, and it's Mr. Nugent's fault that his daughter's eye got injured, but not yours. The law looks at the timing of incidents. That is, things where they happen, what happens before and after a given time means something. 
These events are as follows. Home run rule, seize your dad. Your dad says, throw some peanuts. He throws the peanuts. The speed doesn't matter. Your dad tries to catch the peanuts and they hit you in the eye. The law looks at what's the last responsible cause for your injuries. In proving wrong caused harm, you clearly are harmed. The peanuts caused your injury, but the last event in this chain is your dad trying to catch them. Because he did not catch the peanuts, as much as it pains me to find against you, I must because your dad is responsible for your injuries. And in that regard, I find for the defendant, that is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Richard Harris has to say. The fact that the plaintiff waited to go for medical treatment is not unusual. People often hope they will get better and don't want to take the time to go to the doctor. The plaintiff's injuries are severe, potentially permanent. From the testimony, the plaintiff knew that the mascot would throw peanuts in her direction when they called for them. Her failure to pay attention and dad's inability to catch them were the causes of her injury.